again, classic me. I don't start filming for about an hour into the session when I've already added in for 200, so we're in for 450. Classic, just losing the first bullet always. But the first hand, that's pretty interesting. I have queen 10 of diamonds in middle position, and I opened a $6. The small blind, now three bets to 12, so min raise, tiny, pretty strong, but we're never folding any two. So I call, and the flop comes ace, seven, deuce with two diamonds. I mean, pretty good flop for us, but he's going to have all the stronger hands here, all the aces. However, he decides to check, and this is mostly strength, I think, just nutted hands or bricks. So I decide to take a free turn and check it back. The turn rewards us with the jack of diamonds. We have the second nuts, but sadly he checks again. Super unfortunate. We have to bet. We got to pile money in. So that's what I do for 15, and we see the good news when he puts in the call. The river is just a great brick, the three of spades. We're thinking about all the value we can get when he checks it over, but he doesn't even let me do that. It's a dream when he donks into us for 35. He has about 100 left, so an easy all-in for me. That's what I do. And after a little bit of tanking, he puts it in, asking if we have a flush. I say we do, I show him the bad news, and we scoop. I asked to show for the vlog, to show his cards, but he got up and was pretty upset, walks away. So we'll never know if he was nutted or not. But let's move right along. I look down at a nice suited ace, ace seven of hearts, under the gun plus two, and I raise to eight. We get three callers, so four ways to a flop of ace eight, Brick, uh, two, three, four, one of those cards. And the small blind just leads for 27. This is a really tight player who I've seen just open donk into three others. So I'm very unconfident in, our, in the strength of our ace right now. And I end up just folding the flop. Call me a nit, but whatever. There's one other caller in the cutoff. So they go heads up to the turn. And I continue filming just because I'm interested to see if this goes to showdown, see what they have. The turn brings the queen of diamonds, and the initial razor continues for like 48. Weird sizings, but he's going to do him. And the cutoff calls again. So this brings in the seven of clubs on the river, giving us aces up, but we're not in the sand. And the razor bets again, but only for 50. And now the cutoff shoves on him, and he goes into the tank. Um, I At this point, after all this action, I don't think we would have had the winner. I think we made a good fold. And the guy who's in the tank eventually folds. And I asked the cutoff what he had. He's a super nice guy from Quebec, and he says he had pocket eights, flopped a set, and we were basically dead. So I think we were beat by both players here. Proud of my fold. This next one is just super special. It's a heads up pot versus Henry the Knit. This is what we wait for. And it all starts when we look down at King 10 off in the small blind. It folds all the way around to me and we're never chopping with this. I'm gonna raise absolutely any two against him and King 10 fits very well in that range. So I raise to seven and he puts in the call, go up to a flop of King 5-6 with two clubs. We bank top pair. I could have actually anything. He could have absolutely anything. I'm going to continue 100% of the range. And I do. I just go to $6 just trying to make it look weak. And I guess our plan's paying off because he now raises to 20. Um, Again, easy hand. Never going anywhere. Absolutely any two. The turn is very interesting when it comes to the ten of clubs introducing the front door flush by giving us top two pair. He could have more flushes than me as I'm the razor, but not really. So I'm going to check it over to him, and he now continues to tell the story with a bet of 25 that he's got a set or mostly a flush here, but we're still beating some value hands as two pair or better kings now. So I'm going to put in the call, and the river now brings the three of spades, so 
some straights got introduced. This doesn't change much, just hands like 7-4, but essentially it's a brick. I'm going to check it again, and he now shoves on me for $98, a slight overbet, and my, re my initial reaction is to just fold and let him have it. But then I get to thinking he could be value shoving a worse two pair, or just my whole feeling throughout the hand was that I had the winner, and this doesn't really change much. I'm going to show you guys the live audio to this one. It's really good. Fuck. Maybe you show it to the camera. <laughs> I'm a good hand, bro. And you think I'm light? It's a good jam. Looks like a bluff. You're uncapped, I'm uncapped. Oh my god, are you jamming like 5 6? Okay. He didn't even show his cards for the vlog, but he said he had five deuce of spades, so turned bottom pair into a bluff. And I actually just love his play here, repping bottom set, but he ran into it this time. We're back. One more hand. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> we just sent Henry to the rail. Fuck you. <laughs> get his, get your chips. Bro. Double racking. Yeah. Oh, that's not too bad. Puck only lost 410, not too bad. 410, we got kicked out. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's alright. He literally, he got literally kicked got kicked out uh, because he was like too hammered even though he was like three drinks deep. I was just buzzed, man. It's ridiculous. We, we got the managers <laughs> talking and everything. Yeah, they were apologetic. What and then I was cool. talking to the supervisor upstairs and he was like, well, where is he now? And Henry's like, oh, I'm here. Somehow he makes it back <laughs> in. Um, end of session one. I know it was, uh, it was pretty short. Hopefully the next session, we're going to do two parts to this video. So hopefully the next one will be better. But we had, we had some pretty fun hands today. Some pretty good ones. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to do an outro or anything now. See you right in part two. Yeah, I got some good rest. <laughs> it's day two, part two. It's bright and early. It's like 11.30 right now. The next day, part one was yesterday. Um, Henry's going to fire in the 135 deep stack turbo. I may I may buy it as well. Yeah. You guys are about to find out, I guess. You're going to fire a bullet, man. Yeah, one bullet. Maybe two, unlikely. But so that'll be exciting. Get a, get a tournament for the vlog. Yeah. yeah. First, first live tournament playground. Yeah. yeah. Let's see how it goes. This is this is kind of for you. I fucking love this place. This place is dope, dude. I fucking love this place. Can I some bingo? Let's go play some Mohawk bingo, dude. <laughs> Holy smokes. I fucking love this place. Daddy. All right, I know. Too much of myself. Too much of the life. Let's get back into the hands. Starting off day two strong, just kidding, I have a serious problem with losing my first bullet, so I, I'm already in for 440, just ridiculous. But let's bounce back with ace-king off in the cutoff. Henry is in middle position and raises to 13 after two limpers. The guy to my right calls in the low jack and I decide to squeeze to 45. We see everyone fold around to Henry who ends up folding queen jack, he would tell me later, bloody net. And the guy to my right puts in the call, so over calling twice, we just have this range dominated. But he has limp called pocket tens and jacks in previous hands, so we're gonna tread pretty carefully as the flop comes 975 with two diamonds. He decides to check it over blind, so checks dark, and I see this as kind of weak. So I see bet for 50, sizing up on a board that's pretty bad for me as the Razor. I heard Mariana do this one time, so I'm going to copy him. However, our, must, our read must be completely wrong, as he just rips it in my face for 350, covering me. And there's nothing to do here. I make a pretty quick fold, and he shows us ace-9 of spades for top-top. I have done this before in my previous vlog, so nothing to say about it. 
we get super card dead for the next hour, and our next nice hand is Ace Eight of Diamonds, and I'm in the hijack. I'm gonna raise it up to 15 over a straddle, and the low jack puts in the call. So does the straddler. So three ways to a flop of King Eight Three All Spades. Not terrible for our hand and our range. So after the straddler checks, I'm gonna continue for 20. The low jack folds and the straddler calls. The turn is now the Ten of Clubs, bringing another over, care, uh, over card. And I'm just wanting to get to Cheap Showdown now, so when he checks, I'm going to check it back. And the river is beautiful. It's the Eight of Clubs. We've got the Nut Trips. We've got the Goods, and he now leads into us for 55. This is a pretty big bet, and in the moment, I'm just a scared player, clearly. Uh, scared of a flush, scared of... A full house, but not in the best state of mind after the night before as well. So these are just my excuses here for putting in the call and not raising. We should 100% be going all in, but I'm just a baby. And the straddler shows ace five for a worse trips. This is exactly the hand we should have shoved on because he probably would have sided off. Crying call. I I need to not play scared poker. How scared can we really be when we have pocket aces on the button? One of the best hands in poker, and Bernardo is going to open it up to $6 under the gun. It folds to me, and I decide to 3-bet now to 20 The big blind now cold calls, always weird, and Bernardo ends up tank folding. Love it. Love to see it. So heads up to a flop, which comes deuce 4-7 rainbow. And the big plan just leads into me for 11. Pretty strange. I think he thinks I'm going to miss a lot here, which I absolutely will. Um, so raising is probably the best option. But I want to keep his bluffs in. And he only has around 110. So I think we can just get it in on future streets if he has a top pair type holding or a straight draw that he's going to bluff it off. So I just put in the call. And the turn is the Queen of Diamonds, bringing in a backdoor flush draw. And he continues to barrel for 42. Look, this is really strong. Alarm bells are going off, but we have aces. We have the best pair. I think he still could have some semi-bluffs a little too early to fold. So I put it in, planning on calling the river if it's just a brick. And that's exactly what it is. It's the Nine of Clubs. He instantly jams, and I just snap call. It's not that much, and I made up my mind. And he shows queen ten, uh, queen seven for a turn two pair. I wish I played scared. I don't know how these people keep doing it, man. We're just getting butchered here on day two. Let's, uh, let's turn it around with pocket jacks. Two hands later, after the ace's hand. And the same guy who beat us in that hand opens to 12. It folds to me, and I just... I don't think you should ever flat jacks pre-flop. But I do it here for some reason, and the big blind folds. So we're going heads up, looking for revenge, to a great flop of four deuce-deuce with two clubs. I check, and he continues for 20. I just put in the call, continue to slow this. Turn doesn't really change much. It's the five of spades. I'm going to check and flow, and he decides to check back now. I think we almost always have the winner unless he's slow playing some full houses. And the river is another five. So if he was checking back for paw control with the five on the turn, he now has his beat. I, like, everything that just had his beat still has his beat. And I'm going to try to go for some value, make it look like a bluff, because I almost only ever have a high card here. And I overbet the pot for 60 to make it look pretty bluffy or like I have a full house. And he pretty quickly calls showing ace three for the turn straight. Like, I, I just can't beat these guys. Can't beat them. Let's watch our two friends go at it. Bernardo and Henry the Net. They get it in pre-flop. And not much to show here. Classic flip. Good luck to both players. <laughs> Now. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> There's yeah. hates in the window. Is... <laughs> Brutal. Sorry, man. I don't know. Uh, 
This is the night of. Did not film an outro when we left. Puck went back, uh, sorry, Henry the Knit went back to Vermont, United States. I'm here out in the streets of Montreal. It's really early in the morning. Just thought I'd film one, remembered I hadn't. How did the session go? Um, we got kind of rinsed, made a loose call against Bernardo when he went all in on the river. I don't even think I filmed that hand. Always a fun time. Fuck, you guys are not gonna wanna watch this outro, are you? <laughs> How did it go? You guys saw it, aces twice didn't really get paid actually no got paid the max on one <laughs> the other one we lost the max so just just like a grueling session in uh day two of our two-parter day one ended up day two ended down ended down worse but hey always guys thanks for watching well i'll do the numbers somewhere else